Greg, I, mean, I feel like it, your career has been like kind of the slow burn to get where you're at, but now pay per view, main card, yeah. big fight. I mean, does this feel like you've kind of arrived, so to speak? It feels like every other fight. We prepare the same, uh, we treat it the same. So, I mean, once you're locked in the cage with another dude, you don't have any idea that it's on pay per view. You forget all about that. You could be on Fight Pass, you could be on Prelims, it don't matter. I was kind of curious because you don't strike me as a real, I don't know, kind of into the sentimental type of things. Yeah. But, you know, a New York guy, Madison Square Garden, I mean, does that does that do anything for you? I'll tell you what, man. I've been super fortunate. The UFC has been absolutely amazing with my uh, career and my trajectory. And they've, I mean, the path they put me on is absolutely amazing. Four fights out of seven now in New York. Three in a row in New York. One in Pittsburgh, which is, you know, right down the road from where I went to college. So it's like, you know... The UFC's been, they've been treating me right. It's interesting because I think some people feel like they've slow played you. They haven't given you the tests quick enough. You don't feel that way? No, not at all. The UFC's been awesome with me, man. And I mean, they've, any time that, you know, I wanted to fight, they've got me in there. That's not on the UFC. That's on me. Yeah. So you kind of wanted to take a more slower yeah. pace at it. I, I, yeah, man. I think you've got so much gas in the tank, man. And I think... You know, you can't go out, and I don't get in a ton of wars, you know, but I mean, you fight four times a year, you're going to have a shorter career, you know, so. You called out Anthony Pettis very uncharacteristically, and that certainly didn't come together, so I'm curious, since it didn't work out, you yeah. finally called out, is that one and done, or did it kind of? I called out Paul Felder right after that, too, yeah, so I mean, it was like I was getting to the point where I think a lot of people, I don't want to call them fans, because a lot of more people that are hating, uh, they started saying, you know, you never fight, are you ever going to fight again? Maybe if you fought more than once a year that you'd be at, in the top ten, blah, blah, blah. So I kind of put that out there. Not, I didn't really expect to get Pettis. Um, it just sort of seemed like the only one that made sense. If you looked at everyone else who was booked, who just got done fighting, who was hurt, and then I had said, I'm only fighting a top ten guy at this point. And um, so the only one who wasn't booked is Pettis. And I mean, I waited until they said that he wasn't that he was fighting again. I waited until they said he was going back to 55, and I waited to hear that his foot wasn't broken. So I, you know, I did play that correctly. I didn't know if, is I, if I expected to get that fight, and I didn't, obviously. I think him and I are looking for two different things, and uh, he's already won a belt. He's in a different spot in his career than I am. So, I mean, I think we're looking for two different things. And um, again, me calling someone out does not mean I dislike them. It does not mean that I have a problem with Pettis or Felder. I don't. It was just, they, it, I wanted to kind of put a fight out there, or two fights, I guess, that showed the people that I wasn't not looking for a fight. You know, I think people were getting the impression I didn't want to fight, and I do. It was just, it wasn't materializing. So do you feel like that's something you kind of got to do moving forward now? You got to play, you know, the, the, the entertainment side of the game, I guess? I hope not. You know, I don't love calling people out. I mean, you could definitely, I mean, Chael Sonnen really took me for a ride on his uh, show. He, he kind of threw me under the bus a little bit, and I think... Maybe rightfully so. Uh, it wasn't the best call out. It made me uncomfortable doing it. You could tell I was visibly uncomfortable doing it. Um, and that's why when I did the one with Paul Felder, I didn't do a video. Yeah, I'm not an actor. When I've always said I don't talk shit because it's not organic. When I do it, it looks rehearsed. And you could tell that that was rehearsed. I mean, and then Chael said his biggest complaint with me was I didn't have milk in my cereal. You know, like. Lesson learned for next time. Yeah, right. Next time I'll put milk in my Wheaties. You know, <laughs> well, you, you ended up getting a big fight anyway, right, Kevin Lee? Yeah. Give me your thoughts on this match because he's in kind of an interesting spot, right? I mean, he's a big name. Sure. He's headlined. But he's had some setbacks as sure. well. So what do you Listen, think? Listen, yeah, I'm going to stay away from talking about You guys know I don't talk about my opponents. Um, Kevin's a, he's a great fighter. He's fought some really big names. Everyone knows that. That's not a secret. Um, it's definitely the biggest fight of my career. I, that's not a secret either. That's not something I'm oblivious to um, or naive about. But um, we were treating it the same. We prepared the same. My trainers have trained me accordingly, and I trust that. So we'll be ready. Did, did it, was it a name that excited you, though, when they came with you? Like you said, the biggest fight of your career. Did it, did it get you? Any guy that had a top ten number next to their name was exciting to me. And I literally had said it for a long time. You know, I don't care who it is. As long as it's in the top ten, I'm happy. And that's what we got. There seems to be this growing sentiment, I think, that you're the guy that can beat Habib Nurmagomedov. Sure. Do you do you welcome that opinion? Do you do you like that attention and people saying that about you, or do you feel like, you know, ease up a little bit? Hey, you know, I think we've 
in this sport at this period in time, I have to be a little more short-sighted. Uh, I got a big job to do on Saturday night, and I don't want to look past that. If I can't beat Kevin Lee, then I'm not going to be fighting Khabib. So, um, you know, I'm trying to focus on that at this point in time. But yeah, I mean, I think sometimes you got to fight fire with fire, and the strikers haven't been able to get it done with, with Khabib, so. I know you don't want to look past it. It looks like Tony Ferguson's got to be next, but the only rankings that really matter are the MMA junkie rankings, of course. We have you at number seven in the world. I mean, do, do you think maybe, like you said, people want to see that stylistic match? I mean, if you go out and do something special here, yeah. yes, Tony gets his shot, but if Habib's still there, do you think one and more? I mean, this could be it. This could yeah, be I'd, I'd, I'd call for that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's a fight that's super exciting for me. I've always liked to challenge myself. Uh, again, i got to get past Kevin on Saturday night, and that's, you know, that's a, a big test. So, um, but, yeah, let's say uh, all goes well on Saturday night. That's a fight that I'll call for. No doubt. The hardcores definitely have your back. I mean, the casuals, I don't know. I mean, five finishes in a row. Yeah. I feel like there's still maybe a little bit of a lack of respect there at times. Do you feel like, I mean, is there a goal here to go out and make some kind of statement or to, to turn some heads? I mean, uh, I've got five finishes in a row. I'm trying to make it six on Saturday night. Um, I'm a finisher. I love ending the fight. Um, that's, it doesn't matter if it's against Kevin. It doesn't matter if it's against Yancey. It doesn't matter if it's against Habib. I'm going to try to finish. So, um, again, I know you just mentioned the casuals and the hardcores. I think some people give me, hey, who have you fought? Who have you fought? I mean, my last fight was Yancey, and Yancey's like, Main training partner Max Holloway. He finished Cowboy Oliveira. He, fin you know, he fought Donald Cerrone. Like the guy's not a slouch. And I mean, I think the stats are something like 77 landed punches to one, and nine minutes of control time. So, I mean, what more do you want? I couldn't have done better. You know. No question. Well, yeah. listen. When you play this one out, what, what do you see? I mean, is this going to be a, a grinding type fight? Do you think you can go out there and dominate and, 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 and you know send a message? What kind of fight do you think this is going to be? It's going to be just like every other fight. Same same game plan, same pressure. Might take a little longer to get to the positions I want to, but I'm going to get them.